and he would have been better to, 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 to have shut up. Crying Chris Knight. Why don't we debate? Else Let's have a debate on the air right now no. tonight. I wonder if I can survive a time change. My new time on Sunday night, 9 p.m. Are you going to church only to find a club? Are you tired of looking for the Bible but only getting babble? Are you tired of this commercial? <laughs> so am I. Well, these commercials may be old and boring, but the gospel we preach never is. Come study the Bible with the Church of Christ. We're meeting at 250 the Boulevard. Our new times are Sundays at 9 a.m. for Bible study and 10 a.m. for worship, and then Thursday nights at 7 p.m. Come visit with us. We hope to see you there. Folks, I have survived a lot of events while I've been on the air. Shenanigans of Sheik Nordine. I said you had sex with Jay Richardson. You know what I'm talking about. You're undercover, homosexual. Sound Johnny. Johnny. You're slandering the man. You know what's Wanna really good, me? girlfriend. I brought the money, son. I brought the money, son. Wow. I brought the money. When you want to debate me? Egotistical Eggleston. You is more than a dog. You more than a dog. You worse than a dog. William Lewis Angleston told you that. Now get the coat, and then I'll get up and get me a good lawyer and tell what you did to me. I wonder if I can survive a time change. My new time on Sunday night, 9 p.m. Are you going to church only to find a club? Are you tired of looking for the Bible but only getting babble? <laughs> Are you tired of this commercial? <laughs> so am I. Well, these commercials may be old and boring, but the gospel we preach never is. Come study the Bible with the Church of Christ. We're meeting at 250 the Boulevard. Our new times are Sundays at 9 a.m. for Bible study and 10 a.m. for worship, and then Thursday nights at 7 p.m. Come visit with us. We hope to see you there. Folks, I have survived a lot of events while I've been on the air. The city of Danville. Today in Danville, Virginia, we had all of them come at the very same time and they all inspected our uh, building. They, they ha I have a document here that says uh, that someone complained. The hate of the KKK? You, you're the one promote hate, and so does John Robinson. It's well, not us. Religions. It's not us. Belligerent BTW? So it, it, look, get that out of my face. Sure. Get it out of my face. Get it out of my face. Now, sir, you're with the news media network, and you understand what touching the camera does. Are you with the and I know what I'm... Network? No one gave me that fool. Don't, don't do so it. So you're not with the network? I wonder if I can survive a time change. My new time on Sunday night, 9 p.m. Are you going to church only to find a club? Are you tired of looking for the Bible but only getting babble? <laughs> Are you tired of this commercial? <laughs> so am I. Well, these commercials may be old and boring, but the gospel we preach never is. Come study the Bible with the Church of Christ. We're meeting at 250 the Boulevard. Our new times are Sundays at 9 a.m. for Bible study and 10 a.m. for worship, and then Thursday nights at 7 p.m. Come visit with us. We hope to see you there. Folks, I have survived a lot of events while I've been on the air. A Buddhist and Muslim tag team, Kip and Malvester. <laughs> He might be gonna put his preaching something. He might want yeah, to. Yeah, the preacher may not be thrilled uh, when he gets that phone call this evening. That's right. <laughs> Belligerent BTW. Oh well, let me just bring that up too. He has a criminal record. He don't want nobody to know. Doug, is that airtime available after this show? Cause if it is, I am personally going to buy it so I can replay his comments and I can make my comments about his comments and tell people at home how his comments are wrong. And the valley of the shadow of death. I wonder if I can survive a time change. My new time on Sunday night, 9 p.m. The views expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect the views of the station, its employees, or ownership. The views expressed on this program do not the views expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect the views of the station, its employees, or ownership.
The views expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect the views of the station, its employees, or ownership. Are you going to church only to find a club? Are you tired of looking for the Bible but only getting babble? Are you tired of this commercial? So am I. Well, these commercials may be old and boring, but the gospel we preach never is. Come study the Bible with the Church of Christ. We're meeting at 250 the Boulevard. Our new times are Sundays at 9 a.m. for Bible study and 10 a.m. for worship, and then Thursday nights at 7 p.m. Come visit with us. We hope to see you there. Folks, I have survived a lot of events while I've been on the air. The city of Danville. Today in Danville, Virginia, we had all of them come at the very same time, and they all inspected our uh, building. They, they ha I have a document here that says uh, that someone complained. The hate of the KKK. You, you the one promote hate, and so does John Robinson. The views expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect the views of the station, its employees, or ownership. All right, good evening, everyone. Welcome to A Word from the Lord. James over here with you, and I apologize for the delay. We've been having some technical difficulties uh, switching between uh, uh, Mark going off the set and uh, me getting on, and uh, but we're... Uh, back with you now. Here's our contact information. I'm just going to run through it right quick, uh, quickly for you. And um, then we're going to move on to our lesson since we're running uh, a little bit late here. If you're meeting, uh, if you're in the Eden area, 250 the Boulevard is where we're meeting. Uh, my number is 276-340-2653 or 336-394-5721 is a number where you can reach uh, 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 me, uh, word from the Lord at gmail.com or if you'd like a copy of the program's AWFTLDVD at gmail.com and uh, send, the, send your uh, request for that and uh, we'll get one out to you. That's the easiest way to keep up with it. People call sometime and say, I want, I want a copy of this show and uh, I may be driving or uh, on the road somewhere and I don't have anything to way to write it down, but if you send me an email, uh, we can print that off and then that will be your, uh, your request form. So please do that if you can. If you can't, then... Uh, uh, I'll try to uh, get it to you some other way. But anyway, I'm just trying to say any way that you can get it on paper, uh, that's the best way to do it. Uh, someone once said that uh, uh, your brain is for thinking and paper and, and pencil and paper are for remembering. So if you can write it down, uh, we'll try to remember that. Uh, Danville and uh, Martinsville area, here's where you can reach the, uh, uh, the saints there. I uh, want you to encourage you to go by and visit and uh, let you know that, you know, we're always interested in studying the Bible, and this is what we're doing. We're trying to get people to get back to the Bible and get back to understanding and examining what the Bible says uh, and understanding what God's will is for you. And that's really what our lesson is for tonight. Tonight, our lesson is really designed to help you understand what it means uh, when we say someone is in authority. Now, let's just start off with asking this question. Why is it that people don't like their bosses? A lot of times people make fun of the bosses. They joke about the boss. They, uh, you know, poke fun at the boss, uh, the foreman or whatever. And why is it that that's the case? What is it about bosses that make people dislike them? Well, I think we can pretty easily see that usually it's because the boss is the one who's in authority. And he makes the rules or he enforces the rules. Maybe the foreman enforces the rules. And people generally don't like to be told what to do. And so it really takes a special person to be a boss that someone likes, someone that someone who works with, that someone that likes to uh, 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 serve under or take orders from. And that takes a special skill. But people... Uh, dislike the boss because of that very thing. It's called authority. Now, what if you were your own boss? You know, a lot of times people say, well, if I was my own boss, I wouldn't have this problem. I like working for myself because I don't have a boss. Well, if you're self-employed and you think you don't have a boss, you're not going to be employed very long. You're not going to be self-employed very long because every self-employed person will tell you 
pretty quickly that they have a boss. The boss is their customers or the people that they serve. And so even, even uh, self-employed people do not have total freedom to do what they want to do. They all have to answer to somebody. They all are under <clears throat> some type of authority. So what we're looking for in religion is who's the boss? Who is the authority? Who makes the rules and who is going to be the one that says what is right and what is wrong and who can do what and so forth? That's really what we're getting down to. And people just don't understand authority. But friends, authority is important. It's very, very important. Because authority tells us who to listen to. All right, it tells us who we answer to. It tells us who is over us or who is making the rules. And authority is important because of what it gives to those who are in authority. Now, just think about this. We, here lately, we've, you know, uh, seen a lot of the news and a lot of things going on in our society. People want to buck the system, you know, want to rebel against the fight the man, fight, fight the system. <clears throat> and granted, there's a lot of corruption in the system. But that doesn't mean the system's wrong. It just means the people in the system are wrong. That they're abusing their authority, perhaps. But authority is good because it can give certain individuals power or the ability to enforce rules that need to be enforced. I wouldn't want to live in a society that does not have any authority or it does not have any sense of giving people some authority. Because in that case, that's total anarchy if there's no one in authority or no one enforcing the rules. But also, authority does something for those who follow it. See, when people say, well, we want to rebel against a man, we want to rebel against authority. You know, what's the old song, I fight authority, authority always wins? Uh, well, what you need to realize is it's the people who are in authority that may be abusing it. But authority... While it does give someone power, it also gives other people protection. See, the, the same rules that, that say the police may abuse are the same rules that really protect the citizen. <clears throat> and so there's, there's, a, there's a two sides to that coin of authority. So authority is important. But when we're looking in religion, what we want to understand is why is it that people do what they do? Who is the boss? Who makes the rules? If everybody is under authority, then everybody's going to have to submit to a certain set of rules. Now, the only way someone in our society can be uh, without uh, a law or can go uh, around without submitting to authority is if they have something like diplomatic immunity, which I've never really understood myself. Why do we let people from other countries come in and give them diplomatic immunity and let them do really as they please Whereas the citizens of this country, they can't. See, so diplomatic immunity just doesn't make sense to me because what it does, it lets someone above the law. It keeps somebody from having to submit to the authority of the, of the rules or regulations that everyone else may have to submit to. But when it comes to religion, friends, there is no diplomatic immunity. There is no uh, uh, person who is above the law. There is no person who gets to say, well, I get a pass because... <clears throat> because I'm a special uh, a person. I'm a VIP. In religion, authority is essential, but the key is understanding authority, understanding what it means to be an authority. So let's look at the Bible. Let's look at this. This is going to be a basic, simple, first principle lesson about how we find authority or how we understand authority. Now, I want you to notice this. Authority is basically determining who authorizes what is done? Okay, who authorizes what's done? Here's an example. In Matthew 21, in verse 23, Jesus is being questioned, and when he was coming to the temple, the chief priest uh, came, and, uh, the chief priest of the, of the elders and the people came unto him as he was teaching and said, By what authority doest thou these things? And who gave thee this authority? In other words, who told you you could do it? Who gave you the permission? Now, if something is authorized, it must be heeded by everyone who's under that authority. But 
the statement that is made here in Matthew 21, 23 is who gave you the authority? Who gave you the, the orders? Who gave you the permission to do that? Now, you may, you may uh, not understand authority, and so you may wind up doing something that is against the law, and the policeman may come up and say, who told you you could do that? Who gives you the authority? See, when we put up our tents in, in these uh, different locations, we have to have authority to put it up. We go and get permits. Now, I know there's some people that don't get permits uh, uh, to put uh, their tents up, and I know there's some people that have uh, demonstrations and, uh, what, prayer meetings on the courthouse steps, with the courthouse steps, Mark, uh, w w without permission, the uh, uh, your buddies from over uh, west over, yeah, they, uh, uh, you know, they don't have to have a permit, have, have a permit to have a, a public gathering. Well, they're supposed to. They're supposed to have the authority, get authority, get permission for that. So Jesus is being questioned about his authority. Who gave you the authority? Now, friends, if you are under authority, if you are under, if you have some uh, permission to do something, then you understand what it means to be under authority. Look at this. In Matthew chapter 8 and verses 8 and 9, let's just look at this. Matthew chapter 8 and verse 8. Uh, the centurion is, has come to Jesus asking him for help and uh, to, to heal a servant. And the centurion said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority having soldiers under me, and I say to this man, go, and he goeth, and to another, come, and he cometh, and to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. Now that's what it means to be under authority, to recognize the rule of law and that you are amenable or you're accountable to that law. Now, friends, when it comes to religion, when it comes to religion, we have to find out who's making the rules and who is it, who's the boss, really, when it comes to uh, uh, religious matters. Well, the Bible tells us who the boss is. The boss, if you will, is Jesus. He's the one who has all authority. Look at this. He has the highest authority in all matters. Matthew 28, verse 18, and Jesus said, uh, Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given to me in heaven and earth. Now, that word power is the same word that we see in Matthew 21, 23, the verse we just read. When they said, by whose, by what authority doest thou these things, and who gave thee this authority? So by what authority are you doing these things, or by what power are you doing these things? Jesus said, all authority is given to me in heaven and earth. All power is given to me in heaven and earth. Now, if you have all power, if you have all authority, then guess what? You can make the rules. You can say what gets to be done. You can uh, say what, uh, uh, what people are going to do and how people are going to act, and that's, that's going to be the rules, all right, if you're in the authority. Jesus is in the authority. He is all authority. Now, I submit to you that most people who profess to believe the Bible and profess to follow Jesus, so-called Christians, they will all admit Jesus is the authority. They will say, yes, Jesus has all power. He has all authority. But the question is, do they want to follow that authority? Will they submit to that authority? Will they really and truly be under authority, like the, the centurion that we just read about in Matthew 8? Will they do what Jesus says? When he, if he says go, will they go? If he says come, will they come? If he says do this, will they do it? That's really the question. So what we're trying to find out is, how do we understand authority or, how, or what does it mean to be in authority. Now, one of the phrases that you hear quite a bit in, uh, in the religious world, and oftentimes, the majority of times, <clears throat> it is used incorrectly, is a phrase, in the name of the Lord. Now, friends, when people speak or spoke in the name of the Lord or in the name of Jesus or in the name of God, what that meant was they were speaking by the authority that was given them. They had the authority to speak for God. Now, in the religious world today, we hear a lot of people <clears throat> talking about the name of Jesus, and they would have you to believe that it means simply saying the name of Jesus. When you do something, you say the name of Jesus, and you speak that name 
uh, of Jesus over whatever you're doing or as you're doing something, whether you be baptizing someone or, or whatever it may be. But notice, if we look at the Bible, the Bible will tell us clearly how we find authority and so that we can understand who is really in authority and who is really speaking or who has the authority to speak on God's behalf. Now, here's how we can find what that phrase, in the name of the Lord, means. Deuteronomy 18, verses 17 through 22. And the Lord said unto me, now this is, talking, this is Moses speaking, the Lord said unto me, they have well spoken that which they have spoken. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee, talking about Moses, like to you, and notice, I will put my words in his mouth and he shall speak unto them all that I command him. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. So the prophet that God was going to raise up was going to speak by whatever, whatever God commanded him, and in doing so, he was going to speak in his name. You see that? If you speak in the name of God, if this prophet, which we know is, is Christ, when he speaks in the name of God, he is speaking what God tells him to speak. He's not simply saying the name of God. He is simply, he, but he is speaking what God says to speak. Now let's go on. There's Deuteronomy uh, 18. Let's go on. But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak. You see the connection? Speaking what God has commanded. That's speaking in the name of something uh, of God. If you're speaking in the name of God, you're speaking what God has commanded. Or that shall speak in the name of other gods. In other words, saying that gods have told them to speak something or say something. Even that prophet shall die. And if thou shalt say in thine heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord hath not spoken? When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken, but the prophet that hath spoken, spoken it presumptuously, thou shalt not be afraid of him. So you can know what God has said, you can know that God has given the authority for something if it come to pass. You can know if the prophet is speaking on God's behalf, if he is speaking what God has commanded, based upon the results of what he says. If he speaks something that's going to happen and it doesn't, then you know that that prophet was not really speaking in the name of the Lord or by his authority or by his permission. Now, Friends, God's spokesmen never, ever spoke as their own authority. Now let that sink in a little bit. Because this is very this is an important point. This is important. This is the key to understanding this whole thing about understanding authority. God's spokesmen never spoke as their own authority. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 4 through 5. Paul said, and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and, in power, and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. So Paul was saying, look, I have to demonstrate to you so that you know that my message that I'm preaching is really from God. Now, how did anyone know in the first century, how did anyone know if what they were hearing was indeed from God? They didn't pick up their Bible. They didn't pick up their New Testament because the New Testament wasn't written yet. Paul was writing it uh, uh, as, he, as he was uh, 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 writing this letter. He was writing part of the New Testament. So the folks in, Corinthian, in Corinth, they couldn't go to the Bible and pick up 1 Corinthians and read whether it was true or not because Paul was writing it. So there wasn't a New Testament. There wasn't a written down New Testament to confirm what God had said. So the only way to prove what God was saying, the only way to prove if someone was really speaking on God's behalf was if there was a demonstration. And that's why, and that's why uh, Nicodemus says in John chapter 3, there was a uh, man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the, of the Jews. They came to Jesus by night. 
and said unto him, Rabbi, we know thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do the, these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. The miracles were the confirmation that God was authorizing this person to talk. See that? What the person was saying, his authority had to be proven. Jesus was a man approved of by God. Do you realize that? In Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 2 and verse 22, did I get this right? Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God. He's approved of God among you. How? How did, how did Jesus show his approval? Or how was his approval shown? By miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. That was the proof that God was uh, authorizing this man to speak on his behalf. That this man was working and operating under God's authority. See that? Now, what we're, what we're trying to prove then is when you talk about someone speaking for God, they never went out on a limb and did their own thing. In Galatians 1, verses 11 through 12, Paul says this. He says, But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached to me was not after man, for I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. I got it right from God. And Paul could demonstrate that he got it from God by the miracles which he did. Now today, today we find it a little easier to find out if someone is really speaking or if they have authority to speak for God or if they have the authority to teach something. And that is, we simply go to the Bible. We simply open up the Bible and we can say, well, let's see if it's authorized. Is it authorized in this book? See, that's why it's so important, friends, because we are a people who are trying to say, look, let's get back and make sure that it's authorized in the New Testament. That is, let's make sure it's authorized by God. Let's make sure that God is the one who has sanctioned it, who has given us permission to do it. Now, so when we talk about authority, that's really what we're saying. We're saying, did God give you permission to do this? Now, ah. I know that, uh, uh, that many people don't understand this. But friends, if someone in the first century or even in the Old Testament, if they ever spoke, they had to have God's authority. They never went out on the limb. Notice this. Even the Holy Spirit. Now, a lot of, now today, we have a lot of people saying things about the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit does this and he does that and so forth that the Holy Spirit wouldn't do because the Holy Spirit would not speak of himself. Now, let's, look, let's read this. In John 16, 13. How be it when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you to all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. Now, friends, this does not mean that the Holy Spirit wouldn't talk about himself. We know the Holy Spirit talked about himself because in the truth that he revealed, there's a lot of information about the Holy Spirit. So this is, Jesus is not saying that the Holy Spirit wouldn't talk about himself. He's saying that he would not speak of his own, that he just would go off on his own tangent and, st and start uh, saying things that he was not told to say. The Holy Spirit was, if you'll if you will, was under authority to only say and only guide the apostles and inspired writers in what he himself was told. He didn't just go off willy-nilly and say, well, I think I'm going to have them write this in the book. See, that's why, that's why we, we understand that the Bible is a book of authority. Even... Even Christ and the Holy Spirit were, in a sense, in positions of submitting to authority. Christ submitted to the Father 
when he became the son, when he came in the form of a man and humbled himself, became obedient to the cross. Paul says in Philippians chapter, chapter 2. So he, he submitted himself. He submitted to the authority of God. And the Holy Spirit did not speak of his own. He didn't just say, well, this is what I'm going to have them write. No, only what he heard, he, uh, is that's what he spake. He will show you things to come. He, will, he shall glorify me, for he shall, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. He didn't speak of himself. He didn't make it up his own. And by the way, friends, that's why, that's why when people talk about the Bible, they oftentimes make the Bible their source of authority for doing what they want to do. But that's not the way the Bible should be used. See, the Bible, the Bible was not, um, was, is not designed, was never intended to be used as someone's uh, 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 personal uh, book for making their own rules. See, if the Holy Spirit didn't speak of himself, in other words, he didn't go on his own uh, and say what needed to be said, well then, why do you and I think that we can make the Bible say what we want it to say? I hear, I hear people say this, and I know you have too. Well, that's just your interpretation. No, no. Look at this. In 2 Peter chapter 1, and we're going to look at verse uh, 20 and 21, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation. This is talking about the source. This is where it came from. It didn't come from any, mind, any man's mind. It wasn't something that just was conjured up by the individual. It came from the Holy Spirit, and even that, even those words, were given to him by Christ. So he was only doing what he was authorized to do, and the New Testament writers, Peter, Paul, James, John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and so forth, they only wrote what they were told, just like the prophets of old were only writing what they were told. See, that's how we get authority. For prophecy came not in old time by the will of men. See, this explains what it means of private interpretation. It's talking about the will of man. It didn't come by the will of man. But holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So they were guided to write certain things. Now, friends, if they could not go off on their own to write certain things, why do people today go off on their own to make the Bible mean certain things? See, understanding authority is recognizing that what we're doing is we are only speaking where God allows us to speak and doing those things that God says we can do. That's understanding authority. Now, when you hear someone speak in the name of God or speak in the name of Jesus, they're saying they're speaking by his authority. They are speaking because he gave them the authority to do this or they're doing something because he gave them the authority to do it. So that is very uh, 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 crucial to you understanding that when you read in the New Testament now and someone says, in the name of Jesus or in the name of the Lord, that's not, that doesn't mean saying a specific name or calling out a specific phrase as you're doing something, but it indicates who gave the authority for the event to happen or for the message to be preached? Look at this. Notice in the first century, notice the emphasis of authority in first century preaching. In Acts 2 verse 38, Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Now, he wasn't saying be baptized as someone calls out the name of Jesus over you. He's telling them you need to be baptized because God commanded it. Remember, being under authority means what? Remember what the centurion said in Matthew 8? Do we need to look at that again? Matthew 8, and verse 8. He said, I'm a man under authority. He said, all you have to do is speak the word. I understand what authority means. He said, I, I have soldiers under me. 
He said, and I say to a man, go, and he goes. I say to a man, come, and he comes. And I say to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. Now, if you are under authority of Christ, and Christ is all authority, if Christ says be baptized for the remission of sins, guess what? If, you submit, if you're submitting to his authority, you're going to go and you're going to do it. So when Peter tells these people, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. He's telling them, Jesus has all authority. You need to do this because he commanded it. He's, he's indicating, he's emphasizing the authority by which he's giving these commands. Christ has given the command. Christ has uh, 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 given this message or, or given these commands to be done. Acts 3 verse 6. Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. He wasn't saying a magical abracadabra uh, potion that made this man uh, to be healed. He was telling the man by whose authority he was able to heal this man. And that's what he gets to in Acts chapter 4. In Acts chapter 4, uh, he's having to to give a, 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 an account or give a, um, uh, an explanation by whose authority he's doing these things. Acts 3 verse 16, In his name, through faith in his name, hath, this, hath made this man strong, whom ye see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him, which has given this man perfect soundness in the presence of you all. It is by the authority of Christ that this man is made whole. Acts 4 verse 10, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him, that this man stand before you whole. So it is by his authority that these things are done. Peter and John, they weren't just going out on a limb and saying, well, you know what, I think I'm going to heal this guy because I have the power. No, the power was given to them, and they were using it. See, they were authorized to use these of miracles to confirm or to verify that they were God's spokesman. So they're coming and they're speaking or they're healing these individuals and they're saying it's by the authority of Christ or in the name of Christ. He's given us the permission to do this. And that's why he says there in Acts 4 verse 12, neither is there salvation in any other for there is no other name under heaven given among men where we must be saved. There's no other name that has the authority to save people than Christ. Christ has been given all authority in heaven and earth, Matthew 28, verse 19, uh, 18 and 19. So there's no other name, there's no other person that has the authority to save. Yet while Jesus was on the earth, he had the authority to forgive sins. Did he not? So that in, in Mark chapter 2, verse 9, in Mark chapter 2, verse 9, he demonstrated his authority when he says to this, uh, to this man who's sick of the palsy, thy sins are forgiven thee. And he says, that thou mayest know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. He, has, he had power. He had the authority to forgive sins. So, so Peter is simply emphasizing the authority that they have in doing these things. Acts 4, verse 17 and 18, that it spread no further among the people. This is what the, the religious leaders are saying now. We want this to stop. Let us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in this name. And they call them and command them not to speak at all or teach in the name of Jesus. Now let me ask you, friends, could they... Could they preach what they preached on the day of Pentecost as long as they didn't say Jesus? See, friends, it was by his authority. They did not want Peter and the apostles preaching that Christ had authority. They killed him. They killed Christ so that he... W uh, wouldn't be in authority, that he wouldn't be in a position of power. It didn't work, but that's why they tried to get rid of him. And so what they're trying to do now is say, look, you can't preach that this man has any authority. You stop preaching in his name. 
Well, but, but the apostles were under authority. And that's why, that's why Peter's going to say in, in uh, uh, Acts 5, let me just look here in Acts 4 and verse uh, 29. Notice this. Uh, I'm sorry. They said, uh, they straightly commanded them that they, that they teach no more in his name. And the, uh, Peter and John say, we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. And why? Because they are under authority to do what has been commanded them. If you look in Acts chapter 5, Acts 5, Verse 29, Peter and the other apostles then said, we ought to obey God rather than men. Why? Because they're under authority to say and do these things. Not because they had a magical potion that could heal people, but because they had authority to do that. See this? By stretching forth thine hand to heal, that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus, by the authority of Christ. Who gave them the power and the authority to do these things? It was Christ, all right? Let's move right along. Let's move right along. Uh, Acts 5, verse 40. To him they agreed, and when they had called the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let him go. In other words, don't speak by the authority and tell people that they're speaking by the authority of Christ. They wanted, they wanted people to forget all about Christ who had been crucified by them and had raised again. But when these people come along and are doing miracles and are preaching, demonstrating that they are spokesmen for God by the miracles and signs they're doing, then they are confirming that this Jesus, whom they tried to get rid of, actually has authority. He's in charge. All right, so they say, don't, don't speak in the name. Uh, Acts 8, verse 12 uh, Philip was preaching things concerning the kingdom and the name of Jesus Christ. What was he preaching? He was preaching that Christ is Lord. That's, friends, that's exactly what Peter was preaching. Peter and the eleven were preaching in Acts chapter 2 and verse 33. Remember, he is preaching that Christ is in authority. Look, he says, uh, uh, verse 30, uh, six. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made this same Jesus whom you crucified, Lord and Christ. God has given him authority. He's ruling. He's in charge. And so when we go around preaching, we're preaching in the name of Christ, that he's, a, he's in the authority. He's in, in, he's in charge. See that? That's why preaching in the name of Jesus, doing things in the name of Jesus, it's not saying a magical formula, but rather it is demonstrating who is in authority. Who is making the rules? It's demonstrating who is the boss. And so people were baptized, not by having a magical potion set over them, but were baptized because they were submitting to the authority of Christ. Doing what Jesus said do. Okay? Acts 9 verse 27, Paul had boldly preached uh, at Damascus in the name of Jesus. Well, Paul learned the hard way that Jesus was in authority. Acts 9, he said, Who art thou, Lord? Right? Struck down on the road to Damascus. Who art thou, Lord? Who's in charge? Let me find out who you are, because I know you're, you're greater than I am. He found out the hard way. Christ is in charge. So he spake in the name of the Lord Jesus. That is, he spoke by his authority. And he was preaching that he is in charge, that, that Christ was in charge. Uh, Acts 16, verse 18. Paul cast out this spirit of, of divination out of this young damsel. And how did he do it? He said, I command thee in the name of Jesus to come out of thee. It wasn't saying Jesus that brought the demon out. It wasn't saying the name Jesus that brought the spirit out. But rather it was the authority that Paul had to do that. How do you know that? How do I know that? Well, let's look at this. In Acts chapter uh, 19, 
I believe it is. Um, let's look at Acts 19 and verse uh, 13. Certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus. So they're going to say the name of Jesus. And they're going to say, we adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preaches. All right? Now, if, if the power was simply in saying the name, then why weren't these men able to cast out these, these evil spirits? See, but they weren't. Because notice what happens there in verse 14. And there were seven... Uh, and there were seven of uh, uh, sons of one Sceva, a Jew, and chief of the priests, which did so. So they went around and they're trying to cast out these evil spirits by saying, in the name of Jesus. They're evoking the name. They're saying the name. But here's what happened. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are ye? Now why do you think the evil spirits knew who Paul were, was? I'll tell you why. Because Paul was authorized. He was an authorized agent. Of Jesus, and the men in whom the evil spirit was leaped on the on the, uh, on them and overcame them and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of the house naked. And this is so funny. They fled out of the house naked and wounded. Now, friends, if simply saying the name of Jesus is what brings the power, then why did it not work in this case? You know why? Because these men were not authorized to cast out these demons. They were not authorized. They did not. Uh, they were not acting by the authority, did not have the authority to do these things. They were trying to usurp the authority. So it's not in saying the name, but rather it is an indication that in the name of Jesus is telling whose authority, by whose authority things are, uh, are, are done. Now, friends, Acts 19, verse 13 uh, and following that we just read, that's very much like what we read in Deuteronomy. If, if a person presumes to speak on behalf of God and the thing follow not, you know that he's a liar. You know that he's not speaking for God. And these seven guys, the sons of Sceva, they presumed. They usurped the authority. They said, we're going to say the name of Jesus and we're going to do something. No, you're not going to do anything. You don't have the authority. So what we're trying to get you to do is realize if you're going to speak in the name of Christ or do something in the name of Christ, you're going to have to do it by his authority. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Acts 19 verse 5. Why were they baptized? They were baptized because they were submitting to Christ's authority. It wasn't a magic potion that was set over them. It was because they were submitting to the gospel message that they heard preached by an authorized agent, someone who knew God's will, who was telling them what God had to say, someone who was authorized. They were listening to the authorized message, and thus they were submitting and coming under the authority of the command. Now, friends, there's a lot of individuals, there's a lot of individuals that say they will submit to the rules, to the law, but when it really gets down to it, they want to do their own thing. So what we've demonstrated in these verses, and we're quickly running out of time, but what we're doing with these verses is showing that God's word was the authority then just like it is now. God authorized who to speak for him, and God authorized the message that was being spoken. Now, in 1 Peter 4, verse 11, Peter said, If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. Now, the only way today that you can tell if someone is speaking for God, if someone is speaking by his authority, is to examine, examine the authoritative word. See, you don't have to have someone demonstrate through miraculous means that they are speaking for God, like happened in the first century. Because now we have the authorized word right here. We have God's word. And so what we're going to do is find out if someone is speaking the truth, we just go to the Bible. 
We just open it up and say, hey, let's see if, let's see if that's authorized or not. Let's see if God said that we can do that. Let's see if God has said whether we can uh, do such and such or teach such and such. That's why authority is so important. Now, friends, God, God's word gives authority. All right, Jesus gave authority to his apostles. Matthew 19, verse 28. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, uh, I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit on the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And then he's going to tell them in Matthew chapter 16 and verse 19, he says, you are actually going to be able to determine, you're going to make the rules, I'm giving you authority, to determine what is sin and what's not sin. Notice this, he says, I will give unto uh, thee the keys to the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. All right? So, the authority is being passed. Now, friends, you and I don't get to pick and choose what's sin and what's not sin. We don't have the authority to say, well, we're going to let that slide, and that's not going to be sin, and that's going to be sin. The only way we have the authority to determine what is right and what's wrong is by going to the authorized word. Go into the Bible and determine what is sin and what's not sin. If what God calls sin... If God calls something sin, then we have no uh, uh, choice but to call it sin as well. If we're submitting to the authority. And that's why I'm saying, friends, there's a lot of people that don't want to submit to the authority. They want to believe, or they, want, they would have you to believe that they're under authority. But in reality, in reality, they don't really want to submit to it. All right? In, in reality, they really don't want to, to uh, uh, submit to the authority. So the apostles' words are now the authority for the people today. Look at this. In 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 14 to 15, these things write I unto you, Paul saying, hoping to come to thee shortly. But if I tarry long, all right, I'm writing these things so that if I don't make it in time, you, thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. Paul said, I'm writing rules so that you'll know what's right and wrong. I'm writing rules so you'll know what is authorized and what is not. Now look at this. In 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 14, I want you to notice this. Paul says, I write, these things to sh I write not these things to shame you as my beloved sons. I warn you that though ye have 10,000 instructors... In Christ, yet have not many fathers, for in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel, uh, through the gospel, all right? Then he says in verse 16, he says, Therefore I beseech you be followers of me. Now notice, verse 17. For this cause have I sent unto you Timotheus, who, shall, who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways, at which be in Christ as I teach everywhere in every church. Now, friends, Paul is authorizing what is going on or what should go on in different congregations. Same one church, one kind of church, and the same thing supposed to go on in every one of them. Why? Because the rules are the same. All right? The authority is being laid out as to what should be do can be done and what should be done. But notice this. Paul says, For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. All right? So what we're trying to get you to see is, we're trying to get you to realize that you need to submit to the authority that Paul teaches. The same thing in every church. That's why he says in 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 6, he said you need to learn not to go beyond what is written. You can't go beyond what is written lest you usurp authority. And that's what people are doing. Now, to usurp authority means to act on one's own authority. You set yourself up as the authority. Now, friend, I submit to you there's a lot of people that say they're submitting to Christ's authority, 
But then when it gets right down to it, they say, I'm going to do my own thing. Now, here's what Paul said in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 12. He said, but I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. Now, how would a woman usurp authority? That is, she would do something that's not authorized. Now, friends, there's a lot of people that do that. Now, people say, well, you know, a woman, she can, she can preach. Well, she may can preach, but that doesn't mean she's authorized to preach. She may have the ability, but does she have the authority? Let me tell you, there's a 10-year-old that might get in a car, and he may, he may be able to drive as well as, as anybody. But the fact that he is underage and doesn't have a license means that he may have the ability, but he doesn't have the authority. And people, when it comes to what we do in our religion and even what we do in our life, this has to be the authority. See, people usurp God's authority when they say, well, you know, I, I think it's okay to have women preachers. I think it's okay to have women pastors. Well, the Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 3, he says that a pastor, a bishop, same thing, if you need some instruction on that, we'll be glad to give that to you. But a pastor and a bishop, same thing. He said, if a past, if a bishop, if a man desires the office of bishop, he desires a good work, a bishop then must be blameless. The husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given hospitality, apt to teach. Friends, must qualifies all of the qualifications there. He must be a a husband of one wife. He must be vigilant. He must be sober. He must be of good behavior. So forth. Friends, there's no way a woman can be a bishop. She cannot be a pastor. See that? There's no authority for it. People use self authority when they say she can be. And it's just like when people say today, well, you know, I think, I think two men can get married. I think two women can get married. No, you're usurping. What God has authorized. God never authorized two men to get married. never authorized two women to get married. And for that matter, he never authorized a man and woman to live together unmarried. See, we're not talking about men, man marrying man and women marrying women. Everybody's amen out there. And then I said, whoop, you can't be shacking up either. That's not authorized either. Now you're done going to meddling. Well, I just can't help but speak. What is authorized? If God called us in, I'm going to call it us in. Because we are submitting to the authority of God. See, friends, the reason why people allow women preachers, women pastors, why they allow one man to be a pastor over a church, the reason why people say, well, homosexuals are okay, the reason why people say, well, instrumental music is okay, the reason why they say all these things are okay is because they want to be their own boss. They want to be, they want to be their own boss. They say, well, I want to make the rules. I want freedom to do whatever I want to do. No, friends, you, you may take liberty where you don't have the liberty. You may take license where you're not authorized. You may... Go beyond the authoritative word. But that doesn't change the fact that you're under authority. Jesus said in John 12, 48, He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words has one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same will judge him in the last day. So friends, regardless of what you think about the Bible and regardless of how closely you keep it. In the end, this is what's going to be your judge. In the end, this is what is going to be the final authority on determining your fate. And that's why we want so desperately for people to make sure that what they're doing is based upon this word. Friends, I'm out of time. I hope this has helped. I hope this has helped you, uh, maybe uh, provoked you to seek out uh, local uh, congregation of God's people and study the Bible with them. And if we can help you, we want to do that very thing. Here's our content information. Till next time, remember to ask, what does the Bible say? 
and you'll always get a word from the Lord. Have a good night. 4.2 in Martinsville and in Danville and those watching us on AT&T UVerse Channel 47. We certainly appreciate that as well. There's our brand new website at the bottom. Check it out, starnewsource.com. You'll like it a much cleaner, easier to maneuver website and you can check it out 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. When we put stories on our website. It automatically goes to our Facebook page and to a Twitter feed, so whatever social media you're comfortable using, you'll be able to get an update from us here at Star News. Even when we're not doing live programming or in the news, you can always still keep up with what's happening uh, across the area, both North Carolina and Southside Virginia. We're very proud of that new website, and we hope that you'll like it too, Star News Source. Dot com. And for those of you asking, well, what about your old websites, WGSR47.com and WMDV44.com or Martinsville City News, Eden, Reedsville uh, City News, all of those uh, websites, what happens? Well, if you still go to those, they still work. They just go to the brand new website. So just uh, cut to the chase, starnewsource.com. We think you will really like it, so check it out. Let's uh, take a look at the weather. Um, coming up, we've got a look at the weather.